Hey folks, this is Z-Man. I guess you could say this would be a part two of burning this particular field. I am almost done with this field. As you can see way out there, I applied some different strategies to get it going and I am satisfied with the results. Now, all I have left is just this little bit of corner right here. I have plenty of green space. There are some dead leaves, but plenty of green space. And um, I think I'll be pretty satisfied with this. I know a lot of folks don't like burning, but hey, this is some land that we just recently purchased and I wanna start afresh. Just based off the studies that I've done in order to set things up for wildlife, you can either spray and kill everything, which is what I'm against for sure, or till it, cut it, till it, and then start over, or you could burn. And I just chose to burn just because of the studies that I've done, especially in, in relation to the benefits for wildlife. I think it'll benefit us for what we're looking for. And some of the things you may want to consider when doing the burn is why are you doing the burn? Are you doing it to just clear land? Or are you doing it to get rid of a invasive species of grasses? Are you doing it to increase the habitat for wildlife? Are you doing it to get rid of nuisance trees? I know on one part of my, our property, Bradford pear, when they reproduce, they have thorns. And it was full of Bradford pears and ash trees. And over there, there was a different plan for wire burn compared to what I, wire burned over here. Over here, there's a limited amount of trees, but it's just full a broom sedge and also I wanted to figure out what native grasses I had over here for wildlife benefit and also eventually long term this is going to be a part of our grazing plan so I want to start afresh and know what's in here so once we start grazing our sheep and our cattle we at least have an idea of what we're going to have also in your grazing plan you may want to think about would I want this to be a cool season feel or a warm season feel? Because our goal is to rotate cows all, or livestock all throughout the year, 24, uh, 365 days a year, basically what our goal is long term. So me trying to figure out what's in the field as far as the native grasses, and also uh, thinking about my long term goal is a twofold for us because I want to know exactly what's in here and will it be a benefit to wildlife and also long-term, will it be a benefit to our livestock? Before you burn, you, like I said, you need to have a plan. And the main thing is why do you want to burn? And I figured the second part is make sure that you set up things for safety. Create green space like what I have here all the way around this this field and uh, some green space areas are a whole lot wider than others but i do have green space and when we first bought this property based off the studies i've done i initially thought about eventually i will burn this field so i started working on the green space other thing is you want to make sure that uh, when you do your burn is it permitted for you to do so here in the state of Tennessee, you have to have a permit from October all the way, I think, through May. So I called and got a permit to get this place set up for a burn, or at least got the permit to burn. And the other thing you want to do is make sure that you have the equipment to burn. Water, shovels, help. My daughter and I, based off of what we've done with other fields, and I've had other family members come out and help. The one of the things that we made sure that we brought were radios to be able to communicate. And every so often we'll check in with each other because we have strategic locations that I want her at to make sure that the fire didn't cross over. But trust me, it will cross over. You just have to have a plan to deal with it. Hence, um, the water tank on my trailer and my daughter is walking around with the sprayer. I wish we would have had some mode of transportation. But back here in this part of our property, 
you have to have something that could really go through some deep mud and that four wheeler walks right through without any issues. So just have a plan of why you want to burn, communicate with someone that has a little more skill set than you to make sure that you're doing things or go on YouTube and watch videos. I watched tons of forestry uh, division videos. I even took some of the little online classes that they offered uh, on YouTube. I can't remember exactly what they were, um, but I basically, they had an online class or they had a class and they posted it online, basically, shall I say. I, that's why I ended up taking a class. I say I'll take the class, but I watched the video that was shown in class and some of the steps that they used uh, and I really like the way that they broke them down. What video it was, I've watched so many I couldn't tell you. If I can recall or go back to my history, I'll post some of them. But it was such a benefit. One of the things I learned was if you want it to be a slow burn, you let it burn into the wind, not with the wind. If you want it to be a fast burn, you let it burn with the wind. So right now we have a wind that is blowing out of the south towards the northeast and sometimes to the northwest. And I started to fire on the north end of this field and it slowly burned this field the way I wanted it to burn. As you can see right now, it's just gradually just chewing away at these weeds and broom sedge. So I'm okay with the way the fire is burning. Part of your plan, you need to make sure that you have time allocated to do a burn. Depending on how much time you have if you only have an hour or two i wouldn't do it depending on how big your fire is but if you have all day to do the burn i would say go for it make sure you have the adequate help and the supplies to do it but time is of the essence because the fire is going to do what it want to do depending on the wind you may have a forecast of what the wind is going to do we got a swirl right there and trust me, the wind is going to do what it wants to do. When I watched the news, uh, when I looked at some information last night about the wind, it said that the wind was coming out of the south towards the north. When I get to the property, the wind was going to northeast, northwest. It was just going all over the place. It was blowing south. It was just, oh my gosh, we burned another field. And it was, I had no idea which way the wind was blowing. But we were prepared for it because of the big green space that we had set up for that area. It was a pretty tight area. We had some things that we had to protect, and I had a plan for that. Like out here in this field, I did not want the woods to catch on fire because part of those woods are mine. That's our base of our property line, and I didn't want it. So I made sure that I had the green space, and um, I carefully washed it on the east side of that area my green space didn't get so green um it kind of was taken over by broom sedge and it was a lot of brown so i had to really really watch that area that's why i set a char line or burn line basically kind of like what i did right here i set that burn line to make sure that the fire didn't cross over did it try yes it did even down on the north end of this field it tried to cross over but i was prepared for it I just took my time and I just did it safely. My daughter was kind of letting me know, hey, watch that area, look out for that. And we were able to get this, this area taken care of. Like I said, this area is almost done. I could burn to that fence row. Nope, I don't want to. Don't want to take a chance on catching those woods on fire. I'm, I eventually I would burn those, but not this time. I'm gonna focus on this field and I could incorporate that in about two years from now when I do another burn, if I decide to burn again. Again, having that plan in place and just play it out with the worst of the wind and the best of the wind because the wind is going to do what it's going to do. I've seen some crazy things out here. You, know, you read books and you watch videos and see how things can quickly change. That's why it's so important to try and I watched one guy do a video of how his fire did not go correctly. I think it was, um, oh, I can't think of the name of this video. He tried to do a burn and the wind wasn't cooperating. And I think it may have been to 
the humidity may have been too high. It just didn't burn. But it was a lesson learned, and I learned from that. And today, our temperature is roughly about 55, 60 degrees with a, about 10 to 15 miles an hour with a quick gust of but roughly about 20 ever so often. Um, and the humidity is about 41 to 42%. So that's about right for having a fire that you can control it the best way you can with all the right things set up in place. And as this fire just slowly comes to an end, I'm very, very satisfied with the results. Let's go over here and I'll show you what we got here. This area here, like I said, is, is a area for deer and they are always out here. I know they'll be a little shocked to come in and see that the tall grasses are gone, but they'll be back. But hopefully they'll be satisfied with the results. This burned pretty darn good. I know some folks, oh my gosh, you got to expose dirt. That's no different than if I decided to till it because I didn't want to kill it with pesticides. So you just have to make a decision and be happy with it. I'm okay with the results. I know that the grasses, the native grasses will take over and pick back up soon. So it's a chance I'm willing to take. And that's a part of your plan also. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. It burned it pretty good. I noticed when I burned against the wind, I got all of this stuff underneath burned pretty good. I burned another field and I burned with the wind. A lot of the chaff and, and duff and stuff that was underneath is still there. So some of the new native grasses may be challenged with uh, pushing up through that stuff. But we'll see. We'll see which field, does, which, which field will do the best. That right there didn't burn. That's okay. And I run out of propane also. So I'll let that slowly burn out. I'm so happy with the results. As they say in the uh, forestry division, once that part get done burning, I go back through and do what you call a mop session. It is basically going to put out everything. Anything that's producing smoke, I'm going to put it out. So when we leave, there's no chance of anything flaring up overnight and burning either something that I don't want burn or burning someone else's property. A lot of these little bitty little shrubs and trees that I didn't want, they're gone. Happy. So happy that they're gone. Got a lot of thorns in here, which I may, I can't remember exactly where it's at. There was a little briar patch that was in here somewhere. I hope it, it may be the area that didn't burn. Hopefully it will stay so the rabbits can have a place to hang out for safety from coyotes. Like I said, the coyotes are heavy back here in this area. This is Z-Man. I want to show you the end results of our burn. You have any questions, please ask. I don't know everything about it, but if I could answer something, I will. If you do decide to burn, think safety first. Get your permit, get your crew together, get all these supplies and things together. Wear the correct clothing. Do not wear nylon. Think about Michael Jackson. Some of you may get it, some of you may not. Once nylon catch on fire, it sticks to you. All Everything that I have on today is all cotton. So, if you do decide to do it, have a plan. Work it out in your head. Talk with some professionals about it if you have to. Look at some videos. If I can recall and go back and look at some of those videos, I'll post a link to them. And trust me, watching those videos is a must because it helped me out so, so much. This is Z-Man, and I'm out.